Hello, my name is Philip Beither, Senior Curator for Performing Arts here at the Walker Arts Center. And with me is Julian Crouch from Improbable Theatre, who has uh, created a, a new work that we had a chance to see for the first time in front of a public last night. And the work is called The Devil and Mr. Punch. And this is a chance for us just to talk a little bit about the, your ideas around the making of this work and uh, your work in general. Um, so after last night, we had 100 people in the house seeing first time out with a, a, a work in progress piece. Uh, how do you feel um, now, this morning? Oh, uh, uh, I, I, it has been my head for a long time. And I kind of had a, I thought, oh, maybe I won't wake up at a half six and my head won't be whirring around. But I woke up at a half six and my head was whirring around. <laughs> you woke uh, up you know, what? I you... did wake up at a half six and my head What's was, half... oh, yeah, oh, yeah, six thirty. Yeah. my head was <laughs> like whirring around. Uh, you know, with such a mix of things, it was, uh, you know, as you know, it's been um, it's been a short amount of time to put something together. Right. And we were devising, uh, you know, I really, two weeks ago, I didn't know, I, I, had an, I had a feeling for the atmosphere of the piece, but I didn't really know what the experience would be like. I didn't know whether I'd have to throw all my plans out. Hmm. And so, so the huge amount of kind of relief, I suppose. Right. So a lot of relief. And then immediate, immediately your head kicks into, so what's the next stage? Right. And uh, Did you feel you learned a lot last oh, night? Oh, a huge amount. Just having well, a, pu know, a public yeah, there? And you know, it's, I think uh, you, I, in some ways it's like a confirmation. It's a co you know, because you work on a piece and you have instincts about what you like and how people might respond. And right. So to a certain extent, when people, you'd hear people's reaction, you'd think, yes, that's what I would hope they would right. feel. That's what I feel. Right. And they, and they sort of confirm what I already feel. So on the whole, yes. And if they weren't responding, it was usually because something wasn't quite right yet or ah. something, you know. So, right. so that's what's, it's like having your own, so you sit in an audience, it's like having your own sort of heart expanded. Huh. So usually when if I think oh, I'm bored, I can feel everyone bored around me, or if I'm excited, I can feel everyone excited. Or, right. And sometimes people verbalize that, and that's great when people v verbalize. Right. You know, huh. someone said, so there was someone Spanish behind me, I think, said, a matador? And, and like, <laughs> actually it came out of their mouth, and, <laughs> and I was sort of secretly pleased. Huh. You know, that, right. and... Uh, and yeah, so. but you, you did also say uh, last night that, in many ways, at this stage of a work, it's about what is making the ensemble of artists you had come together happy or yeah, please. Right, that's, that's, that's right. Because this is a tryout, right? And the and the true opening is not until September in Philadelphia, right. and because we have more work to do, right now, my interest is in the company being happy yeah. and ha happy to go back into work in July. Right. But to be honest, the main ingredient of that is probably audience response. If they feel uh, they're in something right. that's good. Which makes them or feel going good. To be good it, yeah. they, so they're actually linked together anyway. Uh -huh. right. But I, sort of, I, said, I said that because I thought that was the best way yeah. to emphasize to an audience that it was a work in progress. I thought that was sure. the best way to express it without feeling like I was making excuses. Right, sure. So, I, I, yeah. so, yeah. You, now, the starting point for this work is the historic figure of Punch. And um, I think you have punch, punch right here. <laughs> and it's, it's such a... Uh, <laughs> Actually, you can't look that way, really. You can look this way, but <laughs> my, oh, I should have him on the other hand. <laughs> he, he looks, in some ways, it's a kind of a, it kind of defines the work in its, its own way because he looks both historical but also very, quite contemporary and, and creepy and uh, uh, beautiful in his own uh, way. Um, how, how did you create this, this image of Punch? And it, it's based in some ways of the historical figure of a big nose and creepy, a kind of ominous kind of uh, looking guy, but also comical. Uh, yeah, I don't, it's, um, it's funny, sitting here with it on my hand, I, I know that I made a punch head when I was a kid, but huh. I can't say when. I know that I made out of paper mache, and I reckon I was probably about eight. Huh. And I, I don't know what happened to it, because I haven't got it anymore. Hmm. So, like, so putting it on, I feel like a real, I feel I, I, like there's something in, in me putting this puppet on 
that connects me to my own history of mm. theatre, this is my own internal history of theatre, or maybe what of why I'm here and why mm. I'm doing this. Mm. But of course, as a like as a character, that goes back hundreds of years. I mean, it's like if you can't trace the beginnings of Punch yeah. in a way, and you know, people have an idea that he he was came through Commedia dell'arte, yeah. a character called Pulcinella. Um, what years would you say? Uh, uh, they're like the 1600s. Yeah, yeah. Commedia, right, you know, that sure. would, like the Hadia, that. Um, Paul Chanello, I think he was a uh, Neapolitan. We did a show yeah, here, the hanging for, you know, The Hanging Man right. was based on a picture of six Paul Chanellas. So Paul Chanella, so Commedia was a big hit. Right. And then from that, Paul Chanella became a big hit in his own right, like Harlequin survived, mm -hmm. like a few of those sure. characters survived. Um, and Paul Chanella became, you know, gradually got different names in different countries. Right. So what do you think it is about Punch uh, and this dysfunctional, violent <laughs> figure that survived over time, that has continued I to don't interest know. people? You know, and it's interesting because I actually started, you know, I, although I made puppets and I made one of these, I mean, I, for a bit I was like a mask maker. And actually this show has been very interesting actually for the masks. Yeah, I mean, right. What I realized last night is that I thought, oh, there's a lot of puppetry around and people like these masks and there's not a lot of mask theatre around. No, there isn't, yeah. And people, masks are tricky because they've, masks are generally fantastic in improvisation and then it's hard to get them to work again. Hmm. They partly work in this show because I actually don't make them do anything that's set. Right. So they yeah. are improvising. Like when, when the guys come, the large I mean, they know where they're going, but, right. they're, but then I'm not telling them how to use them in a way. But anyway, that was a slight... The, what, what was I, what we was were I just about? talking about the the, his, the historical in, continued interest in punch, at least up until modern times. So. Yes. Um, uh, the no, but you asked me something specific. Oh, he, oh, I, well, I was thinking about his. Um, yeah. So I made those masks, those big versions yeah. of, of, and you know, I made them. I think both on the same day. Pretty. I wasn't thinking too heavily about them. But you put them on, and they totally change you. Right. And I was ah. reading something in a book by Keith Johnson about mask work. How he's saying that you know they made a mask who had a big nose and a big chin, and couldn't help hitting people. And I know <sighs> when I joined, I, before Improbable, when I uh, when I met up with Rob Thurtle, right, who's, 20, who's a key years, part collaborator on this. He was in a company called Trickster, which I joined, and and they were they used most a lot of masks, huh. a lot of body extensions, and they were doing, they were doing a piece about. Quackyutal Indians, actually, hmm. which I guess we're not quite in Quackyutal Indian R territory, but right. we're getting yeah. close there. Right. And they have a character called Numal, who has a great big, his nose is slightly different, it's not pointed, but it has a great big tube nose and a great big chin, and he hits people. Huh. And so, you know, I think there is something, <laughs> there is something in the shapes. Uh, I think, you know, there's something in the shape of his face. I think he, that makes him, you know, where, you know, the nose leads the. So wherever he looks, he looks with a lot of energy because the right. nose huh. is looking with him, huh. and I think it leads him into trouble, uh -huh. in a sense. Huh. And the chin also says, like, the chin is also like defiance. So he has curiosity and defiance. I th huh. think. Huh. So and obviously there's. That's the thing in common with him. Usually, his big nose and his big chin. And I, I sort of mine is pulled quite far in a way. Hmm. There's others that are right. sort of shorter and more hooked. But for some reason, I went this way. Um, and he's always. You've mentioned that. Uh, I mean, Punch has always been able to be anarchic and and kind of um, the subversive quality is that he can he can do things that people can't get away with. And I mean, puppets can often. But do they things. can. Do you know, I mean, puppets are really great at, at, at sex and violence. Puppets are really great at sex and violence. Be I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why it's quiet. I think, I think it's because when you try and see actors do sex and violence, particularly sex, you start right. thinking, well, what's that actor really feeling? You know, right, you start sure. getting into there. Whereas somehow with puppets, I mean, I think puppets are very pure theatrical form in that, you know, even just with this on my hand, you know, an audience knows it's not real. There's right. absolutely no way any in the audience, anyone in the audience can think it's real. Yeah. They know there's a hand stuck up it. Right. And they know they can see that his mouth's not moving. But, but immediately it's like you're opening a door to the audience to say, what would it be like if you believed this was a head? 
Right. And these were hands, and that this thing had a had a had life and thoughts. So, in, in a sense, as a puppeteer, you're doing you're doing a little. You're suggesting something that the audience fills in. Right. And they and they have to sort of invest part of themselves. That's right. They're and so some they they're bringing a chunk of themselves, which I think is actually what art probably is. Hmm. All kinds of art right. are probably that. But there's something about the puppet that's maybe the clearest demonstration of that. Huh. Uh, you know, it always struck me. You know, when we did Chuck at a Peter, which you sure. also did. It wasn't yeah. probable we did it here, and they. Um, you know, you really saw the puppeteers. The puppeteers were on stage with this figure, right. and we cut his thumbs off. Yeah, and he wasn't even a particularly, you know, actually in some ways I think this is quite a well-crafted puppet. Yeah, that, much better crafted than that puppet. Uh -huh. But but you know, because people, the moment those two people walked on with the puppet, the audience go, okay, so I'm not meant to look at those people. So those people don't exist. The yeah. puppet exists. Right. And there's not really a lot of rag. That's a boy. And so right. they've brought. So in some ways they're birthing the image. Right. So when you then and when you cut when we cut the thumbs off this character, you could feel yeah people you could feel people would go <gasps> and then they would laugh right but you could you could feel the separation you could feel their thumbs flying off in the audience ha, in a way because ha. they've created um this communal uh, magic I think right and so that's what I think puppets are fantastic at because they just take you somewhere. And because they themselves have no ego, the, like people seem willing to go, and you know, like they might not go with an actor. You might right. take a dislike to an actor on the stage, or you might kind of whiff a little bit of arrogance. It's not right. to say you can't have see arrogance in puppeteers, yeah, because you do sometimes, uh, yeah. and you know, you, you puppeteers can also do a thing of l look at how invisible I am, look how invisible I am, right? So you end up looking at how invisible. You mean when when they're operate when they're doing a kind of. A Whatever you start to see, like a certain puppet, yeah. a puppeteer's face, huh. some you can see. You know. <laughs> Do you uh, buy into the notion that a lot of people say about puppetry that there's also a renewed interest because of the digital age we live in and the ha handmade and really, um, you know, m um, uh, analog quality of puppetry has refascinated as a sort of antidote to everything else being so. So much online and so so digitized and things. Uh, do you probably? Probably. I mean, I think there probably is truth in that. I don't know because I've always been interested in puppets. Yeah. So in a sense, right. Right. And that sort of stuff. You know, maybe. You know, it's funny. I was <laughs> just having breakfast then, and I was uh, having like a pancake, and I and I was saying, "Oh, I like this pancake. It was very rough and like had like burnt bits and crispers." Yeah. And I found my head thinking, you know, like maybe. 60 years ago, when everything was homemade, right. if you w went somewhere, what you wanted was something really regular. Right. You know, the impressive thing was the regular, clean thing. That like when McDonald's first started clean. or yeah, something. Yeah, and so, because that was the status thing. Because right. it wasn't. And you know, I, and I was contemplating this, and on those 60 years now, yeah, we absolutely, it's the opposite. It's absolutely tilted around. So right. yeah. high status, are homemade, maybe a little bit burnt around the edge. You know, something that shows this has just been made Human, in the kitchen. Man. It's not been right. brought and heated up in a microwave. And so, mm. so th that kind of value has totally changed. And yeah. I guess that it probably has changed in the arts as well. Yeah. And, and will continue to. Um, but you know, puppets are just, they're just good storytelling. Mm. I mean, they're just good mm. storytelling. And I think people, um, uh, people want and need stories. Mm. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of realizing this more as I get older. I think I'm, I'm clearer now that people need stories and that mm. I need stories than I was, you know, when I first right. started this. I, I didn't quite know why I was doing art and what the purpose of art was. Mm. But actually, I think people desperately need to frame their experience hmm. with stories. Everyone, right. everyone frames their experience with stories. Even pain is, is a, you know, pain can be alleviated by the right story. I was, I was uh, reading something about how if someone is shot on a battlefield, they require a certain amount of morphine. If someone is shot in the street, they require more morphine. Huh. Because on the battlefield, if you're shot and alive, the several stories, possible stories, is I'm going home. Right. I didn't die. I thought I, this morning I thought I might die. I didn't die. I'm going home. 
hmm. maybe I'm a hero. Right. But if you're shot in the street, you're either, where the hell did that, if you're an yeah. innocent bystander, where the hell did that come from? I'm very unlucky at right. being shot. Huh. Or I was doing a bank job and they right. caught me, I'm going down, I'm going to jail, or you know, or whatever. So, or, and yeah. I, and, they, and this, you know, they, there's different amount of morphines because people frame their experience through story. Hmm. And it affects your total body and the way you see yourself. And huh. I also was, I read that pathological liars are generally more happy than people, than honest people. <laughs> <laughs> so you frame your, and, and so, yeah. and, and I, so I'm very interested in that in yeah. the story. And I know that, you know, I, I, I can be really depressed one day and really happy the next day. And none of my circumstances have changed. It's just mm. the way I'm framing huh. it. So... So I think story is probably psychologically far more important to us than we huh. would ever realize. You, and I think there's something sp special about people sharing, like, so in a live audience, people sharing stories at the same time hmm. is, I think, extraordinary. And that, you know, for cinema and for, and, and I think for a, a theater audience, I think, not so much for like an American TV audience where everyone's watching different, there's so many channels right. that everyone's watching right. different things. I think even in Britain, certainly when I was growing up, there was like three channels. And actually when I, two channels when I, right. when, I, when I was young. And so even that, even though people were in separate... There was a collective They'd go on the next day and say, did you see yeah. that, blah, blah, blah. Right. And then they would talk about it. And I think, so I, you know, there's gonna be a place, there's gonna be more, I think there will be more place for live theater. Huh. And I guess puppetry, Part of that, I, I don't right. know. I actually d kind of don't separate in my head. You know, I d it's not like I love puppets. No, in fact, last night you said um, I don't really consider myself a puppet artist. No, I think the last line of our play is actually I hate puppets. Yes, it's actually right. the last. And was there line. a part of you in that line? Uh, I, you know, on some level, you know, at the moment we, we're just, you know, doing a show and just throwing stuff at right. it, and I'm, yeah. and you know, it's interesting because I don't, I don't sort of know what it means. That's the other thing I was interested because in, you said I, I kind of reject. You didn't say re I reject meaning, but I I don't I don't care about meaning, and I wondered I, if you could I don't talk care about, about meaning. I don't. Uh, it's so sort of uh, counter to what high art or what you know yeah, it's, experimental it's, contemporary it's, you know. I, I love doing. I love th you know, like throwing stuff in there, and it's not it's not random. I know it's not random. Right. But you throw stuff in there because I think somewhere your body is a great creator, or inside you, you're a great mm. creator, and if you can step out of your own way. Right. And I think, um, and not just your own body, but everyone's body, especially when you put a group of people together, like, I think there's always a story there waiting to come out. Mm. Um, and a story that means that everyone in that team was an integral part of that, even if they mm. did nothing, or even actually they had a terrible fight with you, huh. and were really awkward all the way through the process. Right. There's like a story coming out of those groups of people. And your job is, I think, to kind of try and get out of its way so it comes out. It doesn't mean you don't do anything, but you just try and let it come out. Mm. You know, you pay attention to when people, you know, like Nick Havson made, like he missed out a chunk yesterday. And mm. afterwards I thought, you know, that was, he was right, he missed out something that should have been missed out. Oh, I mean, uh, he was mortified It wasn't a by, conscious choice. No, it wasn't a conscious choice, but actually he, he knew somewhere inside him you know, below his head, right. I think, knew huh. to leave it out. Huh. And uh, uh, so I probably lost my track slightly well, there. Or, or would, um, well, I was, I'm, I'm also, I mean, just following up on the question of meaning. Of the meaning of and, like, and, but uh, you also talked about the importance, the ongoing, continued importance of story. Mm. Um, how do you find that balance then between? Well, I think so. What I, so, I, my, so my kind of feeling is, and it's like the Michelangelo thing of that the sculptures and the marble. He just has to chip away and discover huh. it, huh. it, like a very famous, almost cliched quote. Right. But, right. but I think that's true. I think huh. it's true. Huh. I think, and, uh, and if it's not true, it's still the best way to make art that I know to pretend it's true if it's not true. Meaning um, that when you assemble the right people, the right materials that the meaning will find itself in yeah, a Yeah, and that actually to a certain extent you can also talk something into existence. You can mm. talk and think it. And this show seemed impossible for me to start, you know, and I was, you know, Ragnar's sitting over there, and I spent a lot of time in cafes, Ragnar, talking about this show, right. when we didn't really have the money to do it, or the right people to do it, or the right, right circumstances, and not, certainly not enough time, and somehow you end up, you know, it happens, and you go, wow, this, uh, 
<laughs> it's happened. Uh. So, and I think actually you can, that's what happens. You talk and dream up. And again, it's that thing. You, make, you have a, make up a story inside you. Hmm. And, it, and they s seem to be able to come true. I think what doesn't work for me is going, well, I'm going to do a show about, you know, I, it doesn't work for me. And then people say, but why? And I'm saying, well, you're doing this because of blah, blah, blah. I, doesn't, that, right. I can't see it that way. Right. I have to be, I suppose, like in a trance state. And what's, what's interesting, I can, it's very clear to understand what I'm making. It's very easy for me. I just, I just right. lose myself and I'm making. Yeah. But to try and be in a trance state and lead a group of people is, is a different thing. Right. Which, which is why theatre, when it works, is remarkable, I think, because mm. it involves being in a kind of communal trance yeah. space. So you could just kind of blob out and yeah, never right. do anything, which I think is a company improbable. You know, we've teetered on that edge a lot. You know. <laughs> and sometimes that tension is, is yeah. part of the interesting you yeah. know, appeal. But I don't, I'm not, you know, now I'm just, you know, when I watch a show and I hear Nick improvising some bits or I see this image or that image in my head, it just makes stories all the time, and the audience do as well. I mean, right. we, I was asked yesterday, you know, someone said, well, I, it all made sense apart from this one thing with the cat. The How do you justify that? And oh, you sort yeah. of think, wow, you know, none of it really <laughs> links. But her head had right. made all of it link apart from the matador. Yeah. So if I look, and actually it irritated me to be asked that. Yeah, right. And I was probably a little irritable in my answer. But actually underneath it is like a huge compliment because she was sort of saying... Everything made sense apart from this one, but she was saying she managed to link that yeah, entire show right. apart from. But it's a it's a radically different approach to theater than a playwright writes a script and the actors and director uh, sort of you know put it on and through their own interpretation. Uh, can you talk a little bit about you, you really start with um, people, a general idea, and and making materials and puppets and things and. Do you see that as a radical, different approach to making theater than uh, the sort of script-based, you know, dry, dry, the literary approach? I, I, I mean, to be honest, I just, I, I wasn't like, oh, I'll, I'll do this radical thing. For me, that is the most normal way that I could do it. Right. And that's been you know, your history, really. I mean, Improbable is a company with different artistic directors. Sometimes we work together, sometimes we don't work at different pairs, whatever. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of different working methods just within in sure. and even within myself there's certain working methods I've actually only really done two shows kind of on my own actually on my own with Rob one of them is a big outdoor show called Sticky yeah uh, with rolls and rolls of scotch tape sellotape and fireworks and then this and actually both of them and it's part to do with Rob's character which is a big part hmm. of actually this show and Sticky is Rob is Likes, he, he likes to write things down. He likes lists. He's kind of mm. got that personality. Right. Huh. I don't write anything down, but, but I, I sort of, I maybe have visions. Right. And between us, we seem to do a certain kind of show huh. that actually is very prepared. Yeah. In a sense, not, not prepared beforehand, but it, like, like Sticky is just too dangerous to improvise because right. it's got cranes and fireworks and people could die. Right. And literally, they yeah. could die. I think, you know, things could right. fall or people could be. Blind, so you can't improvise with that. When you say improvise, you mean um, well, you can't sort of say do what you itself, like uh, here. Uh -huh. Yeah, and but and generally when I work, often because actually Phantom and Lee come from improvisational backgrounds. Yeah. My function often the other two, my, yeah, the, yeah, who went actually went partners. involved in this one. But yeah. uh, so my often my job as a designer working with them is to I'll do the things that are set. Hmm. So when we did a bit of stream with lots of Scotch tape. I did actually know the root of every single piece of scotch tape, even though the acting scenes were totally improvised. Huh. The bits in between the links, which were using this, this scenery, were absolutely set. And so often our shows had these two dynamics, totally free right. and set. And, and actually, to be honest, this has, because Nick Havison is a performer of such quality, you can push him onto the stage and he'll do something. Right, yeah. You know, this has, uh, there'll be chunks of this will probably never be totally fixed. Hmm. Although I then the next day might go, here's your pattern through this and use this kind of thing to get to this side of the stage, right. use this to get back. But what he does within that pattern is totally hmm. free. And that's fine because no one else is on stage and no one else is doing anything. But as soon as you get back then, he's doing the voice of a puppet and someone right. else is doing the puppet. Between them or, and myself and then they have to set some of that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's just, it's different. And I mean, the thing is, I have now done 
I've sort of done it enough now to... To, to trust. I, I, well, you know, I just don't believe in rules in the sense right. that I don't believe there's a best way to work and, uh, and uh, you know, I don't believe improvisation is God and I don't believe setting things in stone is God. But, right. you know, each, each one seems to have a different approach. But I definitely don't set out... I'd, I'm not setting out to be perverse and say this time it seemed to me absolutely normal because I like because I think a, you know I'm used to making sculpt and I sculpt sure. fast and I yeah. love for me that's the most therapeutic thing I could do in life mm. is to uh, make uh. Uh, because I, I'm not totally in control I love that relationship between half and control and right. um, so I do that because that's the best way for me to kind of think and keep an idea alive is just right. to make stuff sure. and then give, you know, like a cow and think, oh, I can make this jaw moving and then give yeah. it to someone like Nick Haverson. Right. That's the best thing I can do. Uh. And then, I, so I know that I'm good at like, creating worlds. Right. And so for me, most of, in, most, uh, most, a lot of our shows, I'll always start that way, you know, tr tr try and uh, create a show so panic. Right. But, you know, I'll create a world of, um, brown paper or whatever, and I yeah. say everything's going to be brown paper, I'll make masks out of brown paper. So I, I'll often do that, is set up a world hmm. that then some other people will improvise in, and I might step back for a little bit in that, and then, <coughs> but I think I'm also quite good at editing, like putting things together, and thinking, right. oh, you know, so they're the stages I like, I love the, like the real creation at the beginning of yeah. a, a world, which then we treat like found objects, so huh. right. we use found objects, but also I make a lot of heads. Yeah. You know, and I don't know which one is going to be the judge. Right. And then we think, you know, this one. And sometimes, actually not in the show, we've auditioned puppets <laughs> where you get people to make a puppet and, and you treat See them like they're an actor. And then right. you say, could you read the part of the judge? And, you know, you sometimes... Huh. And I was laughing today in the car in because I thought, you know, uh, you know that singing cow? Yeah, sure. And it started off as a joke and I thought, you know, that, no, this is absolutely what we should do. Is for the, I should interview that singing cow. We Actually, we laughed because Rang said, I should wear the singing cow for... And so you could interview me and I would be the singing right. cow. <laughs> but I thought, no, absolutely, we should interview the singing cow about what to do next in the show. And uh. we should interview Punch about what to, They'll have different uh. ideas, uh. but you'll, f they'll, you'll find out about them. <laughs> and, I, I, and I'm not joking about that. And that's, yeah. I don't know. That's something to do with, that's because I think by doing shows, acting or with puppets, you are channeling something that's... right. That's more deep down deep, and deeper down right certainly deeper down and maybe even communal but certainly mm. deeper down like the, the the smart guy is deeper down right really <laughs> even though he may look like a, a cow <laughs> <laughs> so so you saw you saw this 90 minutes of work you had last night um do you is this a process now you step back you see what you've got, you see what you think is working. You were saying last night, you kind of make some, con some even nuanced connections that, that then allows the audience or the show to kind of have a, uh, even a greater connective thread and things like that. Or what's, what's your next step? I think the next, you know, as we did make a few little alterations yesterday, yeah. which I think helped. Yeah. You mean from the dress rehearsal to? Yeah. To, and I think, you know, I could go, and then, and then you know, if you're the director, you can very easily think, oh, well, I made those really clever decisions. I think they were good decisions, actually. Right. But also a show, what's, what's incredible, I think, when you throw a group of people in with a devised piece, that actually if I, just prob if I said nothing and they ran it for three days, a lot of stuff would fix itself. Hmm. Not through discussion, it would just fix itself because it is a kind of magical, it is like an organism. So I think probably, you know, I have a few notes. Right. But but I don't think I'm going to change anything. But actually. then July, when you have a period of three weeks, um, you you take what. You well, I don't know because here. I think actually I'm going to you know by the time they do three more today will be interesting because they have to do two shows so closely in a right. row that they won't be able to think in between them and they'll be tired. Uh huh. So I'm sort of in my head. I think the second show today will be like divination. I may find that. Huh. That's where we may find out some stuff because you know that some lower stuff will have to kick in because right, I think right. their brains will be shot. Huh. People will make mistakes and you know. Right. <laughs> uh, but I may find out some things from that, and then huh. there's another show tomorrow, and I I don't know really. I don't. I think for me, uh, I the hard the hardest thing 
in a way, with doing a show like this, especially with some people in there who have never done theatre before, hmm. is people want me to make decisions right. all the time. And, and actually producers do as well. And they, yeah, everyone wants you right. to make decisions. And they want to know when you're going to do a script or something like that. Yeah, and, right. and I know that I have to hold off until the right time to do a script. And some yeah. might be the day before, right. or it might be a week before. And I don't know. And so I think... I think um, I, I just have to be patient. I mean, I, I think at the moment I look at it and think, well, you know, there's definitely, when it goes underwater, there's like a crash and goes underwater. Right. I know I have a little window in there to do some really ridiculous stuff. Right. So I could go away and make, you know, fish and then yeah. s squid. I could have a little submarine that goes, I could see Harvey and Hovey and right. diving bells. I don't know, I don't know what I'll do. Right. But I sort of know that I could, exp I could leave it as it is, structurally. Yeah. And it would just get better and better. And mm. I know that. I mean, and then I could put a few things, okay, now we're there, we could just pull that out. I mean, I'm right. still, I think, I think that there's a puppet show in there that could be honed. Right, which is and, the kind of first half in some way. Well, it, I don't think it is, actually. It runs all the uh -huh. way through, but I, yeah. think, I think it's... Uh, I, think it's I, think I, could, I think I could cut it down. Yeah, right. Because I... I and, I, and then there's two characters, there's Harvey and Hovey. Yeah. One of whom, and then the people playing there, one of those is very confident. And so he's up there and he's doing that, and the other one's not so confident. Yeah. And I need to think, look a bit more at that. And I think what I want to do is just, in a way, I, I'm peppering the show with their, I think, Dadaist mm. memories mm. of vaudeville acts, some of which kind of make sense and which, some of which don't. Yeah. And I want to look at that, that their relationship. Because one of them, I think, is kind of sort of like the butler, sort of like right. the dresser. Yeah. But he's also up there as well. And so it's a it's a straight man, Conor, and I want to look right. at their relationship. And one of the reasons I didn't quite was because Rob, who's playing one of them, is also sort of writing the script out. Sure. So, I mean, right. he's, he's doing so many jobs yeah. that, right. that he hasn't really had time to think. So I would look, I would look with those two a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, th um, and I think. I like, I don't totally, I think it'll make more sense if it makes less sense hmm. right. as a piece. Right. You know, and so I will, I think I'll, I'm going to, I think the best way to integrate it is by not integrating it, separating right. out the vaudeville stuff. And I, and I, you know, I have ideas for that. Yeah, and, right. And, uh, you know, there's a kind of little thread of Sicilian puppetry at the beginning and a little bit at the end. Yeah. And there's some bits in it where they talk about, like, the Book of Love. I'm thinking, I can see some places where I could, do that Sicilian puppetry story a little bit more. Right. I'm interested in Dr. Faustus, and I would like to think, can I get any of that in? So, right. But you know... Because there, there is this interest, I mean, there's this parallel, it seems, in the piece around um, the, the, the permanence of violence, or violence as a human response to things, and, and brutality, and then love as well. And uh, yes. I wonder uh, about, was that, I mean, how, how you, how you're playing with those lines. I mean, the, vi the, 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 the core of violence uh, as part of the way humans have always existed seems to be something you, you th thread from just the, the classical punch to reemerges throughout the yeah, piece in some way. But then there's also this tenderness at, at times. Yes. You know, it's interesting because I think, actually the last thing I changed on the, you know, when, between the dress rehearsal, yeah. And I don't know whether people, as I said, the last line was, I hate puppets. Of course, it's not true, because then there's like a cod Italian, yeah. <laughs> Sicilian puppetry scene <laughs> right. at the end. And actually, I changed the last line so that, the, so that Harvey says, I love you to Harvey right. before he dies. And I don't, you know, it's yeah. an Italian. Right. And they just listen to a lot of gibberish Italian, so I don't know whether it comes across. But, yeah. you know, for me, uh, it moved me, hmm. because for me, it, it is a show about, it is, I know it's a show about love. Hmm. And actually, you know, I've put people in the show who I love. I mean, hmm. for me, it's been, it's not like working on Broadway or The Met or, and, you know, right. I've, I've moved here to America. I have some friends in Britain who I love. Right. And I have some new friends in America who I, I love. It's not quite as simple as that because I've been yeah. back and forward for a long time. Sure. And I, I actually, I mean, everyone is very good at what they do in the show, but I sort of employed them because they were my friends and I right. wanted to do a show where I liked what I was doing, like I was making things I like making, and where I was working with people who I like. And so, uh, so there is... And that sense of that, that, that relation, those relationships and that love 
amongst the, the collaborators and the, and the performers is part of what uh, is evident. You get that sense from an audience yes. that people are really enjoying being together. Yes, I think something. so. And this is a new group without, but I think, so I think it's about love. And huh. I think it's about love and conflict. I actually don't think it's about violence because I think v violence on stage is the theatrical metaphor f for conflict hmm. in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not really doing a show about the nature of violence. No, I think right. that would be a different show. Yeah. I mean, I should, but you, maybe. How I do you define the difference the, between conflict and violence? Well, then? well, because so. You know, so when Punch is hitting Judy with sure. a stick or throwing right. the baby out the window. Yeah. That's a theatrical uh, explosion right. of what it might be to go home and have an argument with your wife whilst right. the baby's crying. Hmm. You know, sure. I'm not going to hit her with a stick and throw the baby out the window. Right. But so what's so they play out the, the, the most extreme. They play out the story of that uh -huh. in a way that makes us laugh, or right. it goes too far and yeah. makes us laugh, and maybe brings understanding to what it is, or at hmm. least. He, he, at least it sort of says, you know, everyone fights with their wife right. and everyone throws their baby out the window. You know, uh, <laughs> you know it makes you... The, right. And that's it, it what theatre does. You know, it kind of exaggerates right. on a very simple level. Huh. So I don't really think the show's about violence. I think the show's about conflict and love mm. and what it's like to love someone and be in conflict with them at the same time. And, you know, when, mm. when people talk about story structures or when Hollywood people do a film and, the, you know, in a in a... In a cowboy film, there's a good cowboy and a bad cowboy, or whatever. Right. There's yeah. a goodie and a baddie. Yeah. In a love film, the protagonist and the antagonist are the romantic couple. Hmm. Hmm. You know, they're right. the, so they're they're good. But, you know, and that's what a romantic comedy is about. They they fall out and blah blah blah. He has to right. bring it back or what? Yeah. So, so yeah. even in love, there's there's a kind of theatrical violence. Hmm. Uh, I th Think. I mean, right. this makes it sound like I've really thought about this. Yeah, and right. This is what I, as I mean when I, I do the shows first, and then afterwards I sure. talk rubbish about them. You know, <laughs> but uh, so I think it's, for me, it's a show about love, and you know, and there's there's me and my family in this. The, you know, I look at pun. You know, I look at punch, and I can actually see my grandfather huh. in him. I. I I had one grandfather who's a butcher, Hayward the Butcher is in huh, the show, huh, and, and huh. he was a butcher in the butcher's shop, and they, I sort of, you know, they tell stories about him in my family, they don't quite, my mother doesn't quite tell me, I think he was probably a very difficult man, you know, right. and quite a hard man, hmm. and some, but I see in his face, I see my dead grandfather, huh. but I kind of, you know, I see myself, I see myself in him, it's that kind right. of curiosity, and that kind of, you know, I, I, I can re relate to him yeah. as well. You know, in Harvey and Hovey, I see me and Rob. Uh-huh, right. I see me and Phelan. Yeah, or, You know, sure. and I see huh. uh, me and my brother. Uh, hmm. a, hmm. You know, in Harvey and Punch, I see me and the project I'm working on, or, you know, in the dog, the right. typewriter, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, there's a, something about, like, the, what... The creative process. And, you know, like, yeah. doing, like, Adam's Family on Broadway, whatever. You know, this right. is, in many ways, I want to do something that was so unlike that process. Yeah. Uh, not, not to particularly knock that process, you know, because there's a reason that world's like that. Right. And I'm actually, in a way, like a privileged stranger to go and do that. Mm. The same when I go to Met, I used to laugh, as like rowing up the Amazon, being an anthropologist, you got to go <laughs> and be in this tribe. I'm very lucky, because I don't have to... I can just study their ways, right. hopefully sort of be accepted and then get in the boat again and go to this other tribe <laughs> and then get in the boat. And it's fairly unusual, In some ways, though, this show is the boat. This is uh -huh. me, the show, my own weird tribe, which someone right. else would find irritating and right. infuriating. Uh -huh. You know, it's interesting, I think, as a, I mean, I suppose I'm going back to this thing of meaning or why you put things together. Mm -hmm. I don't think people really ask painters. You know, I don't suppose right. people... I mean, they probably did occasionally, but, you know, normally... I think people aren't saying, "Oh, why did you put that?" But do you think that? And, and, and I wonder if you think that's part of what has become a, uh, problematic for theater, is that um, that it's always expected to be so, so uh, linear and so, um, you know, uh, this leads to that, to that, or. Well, I don't know because I don't expect it to be that. So I'm always yeah. amazed. I, I don't expect it to be that, but I know when I go and see like proper right. plays. <laughs> uh, 
which sometimes can be great, but I, I uh, you know, that when they become really boring to me is when I feel that whoever wrote it knew what they were doing. And, you know, and, and when you start kind of hearing th like three characters kind of all saying, doing something, and you can, I can see the writer right. writing it. I mean, I'm not interested. There's certain things like, you know, like Chekhov, hmm. I found myself interested in because I don't think he knew what he was saying all the time. Right. I don't think he knew what every sentence meant. You know, and actually it's quite funny and absurdist. Right. I think far more than the British and, and, and the Americans tend to do it. Hmm. Uh, and so m maybe some gets lost in translation. And actually, with Shakespeare, I'm not sure that Shakespeare... I reckon Shakespeare was working under probably very similar circumstances to us last week. <laughs> I reckon he had to work very fast right. for a group of peculiar people with some very strange patrons, hmm. which meant he couldn't do this or do that because someone might get executed or he might get executed. <laughs> so I... I I'm always interested when I work on Shakespeare because some of it, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's all like Shakespeare right. knew what he was doing all the yeah. time. But it's really it's the unknown and the mysterious and the heart and the in, the impossible to sort of define or articulate where where you find uh, the art making in live performance and theater the most interesting, uh, where where the real potential is, uh, in many ways it, it seems. Is I that mean, a I don't, I don't know. I, the most interesting thing about doing the work is, I think, in the not knowing hmm. and in the mistakes right. or the things that go wrong. But the skill, I think, is then being able to kind of harness to say, no, that the thing you just did wrong is the right, right. thing. Right, yeah. And so I think, you know, when you work, you have to... You have to, I suppose, to, in some ways, you have to have the strength to lead somehow, but the humility to allow yourself to be led. And so mm. it's just that balance, which I'm sure is the same in love. I mm. mean, it's just the same in uh, everything. Uh. And probably the same in cooking, or I don't know. Right. It's, uh, or life in general. Yeah, you know, yeah. and um, you try and control it all the time, and when it's controlled, then you end up something with something that looks like that, I suppose. <laughs> and, and I think a lot of plays look like that to yeah, me, you know. Right. Yeah. It's not to say they're bad or whatever, but I don't need that. Right, yeah. I don't need that. And I, I also, I actually don't need things to be perfect. And I'm not interested in things being perfect. I think, you know, I, I want approval. You know, like everyone wants a pat on the back from the sure. audience and right. everyone, you know, Critics you want people to say, well, you're great or whatever. Yeah, right. But I don't, it would be awful actually if you just got up that all the time. So I, I want to, I think maybe I've just been doing long enough that I, this part of me that doesn't care, I really do care. I mean, you have to care to sort of do it because it's sure. like long Too hours hard. and terrible yeah. pay for, you know, and, <laughs> right. and, and, and you know, you can become unpopular really easily or whatever. But, but there's part of me that I don't care and that, I, you know, I want to be surprised all the time, hmm. you know, I, and yourself I, as a maker. Yeah, and I want to be moved, and I want to be surprised, and you know, I get, I want to be touched by stuff, and I don't know why a couple of guys, you know, in plastic armor, hitting each other with anachronistic <laughs> blow-up swords that I haven't had time to turn into anything else, and then saying I love you, and they're falling on the ground, and then someone comes out and sings, really almost a totally inappropriate song, the final in a song, completely yeah. different accent, you know, right. but for some reason those combinations of things touch me huh. and uh, and I you know I like the feel in the audience and even, even some people are confused I like that feeling right uh, so I don't know I mean I don't know huh. yeah I think you know it's interesting you had that like puppet cinema right Next door and and, and Ragnar, yeah. there's been the little film Maybe for that. Film, for that. Yeah. And you know when we we've, were first talking about that in the cafe, you know you'd, you started that thing of I think I'm sure we asked you say so what kind of films would puppets like to watch. Yeah. And for some reason it's really interesting what people say because yeah. it's a bit like and if you say well what kind of theatre would puppets like to see, <laughs> I so, and and people say you know, then I, I sort of think. 
well, what part of you is answering that question? You know, mm. is that really is what we want to see? Probably, right. yeah. I think. Or is it projecting in some ways into some I don't some think it is projecting. I think yeah. it's what we want to see. Huh. I, I think so. Yeah. It's like me interviewing the puppet about what to do next in the show. Yeah, I right. think you get closer to yourself by that kind of little trick. Huh. And um, huh. I, you know, I think people like to see singing cows and people yeah. with stupid heads <laughs> on. And people like to be moved and confused. I mean, I don't know. I just right. and and it's like there's like it's like there's a gap there. And I think if the gap is so wide, which can happen with the avant-garde or whatever, yeah, that a lot of people could fall into the gap. But if you get the gap just right, where the audience is doing work and you're doing work, and yeah, there's something really fantastic can happen. Yeah. I think if the gap's not big enough, right. Which, for me, most theatre, the gap's not big enough, hmm. actually. There's not enough uh, risk being taken. Yeah, There's not, and yeah. I'm just bored. Right. Uh, but I do, and then, yeah, and if it's really weird, sometimes I go in there. But I mean, I, I, I think I'd you rather, I'd probably yeah. lean towards a bigger gap rather yeah. than, but I don't like a gap of that. I really yeah. don't. I mean, to be honest, I don't, I hate people sitting around a table talking about communism in the middle of a play or something. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I just go, oh, God, I, you know. <laughs> right. I know, I can... You know, I could read the program notes, and, yeah, or you know, right. you think, "Oh, I've got this already." Yeah, isn't it time for a singing cat to come on stage? <laughs> <laughs> it, was that partly why? Because you you could have chosen, uh, given the subversive history of, as you've said in in other interviews, that you know, often punch would, could say things that uh, that the other forms of art or entertainment uh, or theater couldn't really and could kind of, uh, as the British would say, take the piss out of, you know, the, the, the king or the, or, yes. or, you know, the, 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 the power structure, uh, the, the rich. Um, you, you chose not to necessarily go a, 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 a consciously subversive route necessarily with punch in this, in this piece. Well, we did, we did have penises in hell. That's true. <laughs> poking at him. I, thought I, I wasn't quite well, sure how that was going to Tell me, I, I thought that was pretty great. <laughs> Large penises uh, coming right at him. But and, they were like uh, sniffing animals. It was just, they actually weren't, it was, I thought actually they were quite tender in a way, but. Uh, yeah, right, um, right. Do, so, but, but what do you mean by subversive? Do you well, mean, I mean like politically subversive? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I think it's then got that I just don't know enough about politics. Yeah, right. I don't have time to read the papers, <laughs> and I don't really watch television. And so, I'm, in but some you ways, also I'm said like, that, uh, that you know it, sometimes that can get boring so quickly. Uh, yeah, but you know, I think I mean it was so. In the middle of last night, you know, Nick Havison. He started speaking about critics and theatre, yeah, you know, in a theatre right. in the middle of yeah. the piece. And actually, I thought that really was subversive. It, it, yeah, I hadn't told right. him to do it. It just came out of him. Uh, and actually, oh, I didn't um, know that was improvised kind yeah, of. Yeah, he improvised yeah. that. He, that's actually where he messed up. He was meant to do something else and oh. forgot, lost his uh -huh. place. Right. And that just came out of him. Huh. And I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. And actually, I think it, I thought actually that was subversive in yeah, a way. Yeah, right. It was subversive to do that in the middle of a piece. But it's the whole piece is so weird. Maybe I think it's when something's so weird. It's hard to, <laughs> to be, be further subversive. subversive. It's Unless, sort of subversive yeah. to do a hand puppet punch that's some ways quite traditional in the, in the, in the opening parts of the show in an art center that is uh, committed, you know, that is in some mm. ways, uh, you know, uh, s s quite experimental, you know, supports yes. experiment experimental yes. work in a certain Was that conscious or? Uh, uh, what you mean by punch being like traditional? You like a being... traditional punch. Your interest originally, I mean, uh, overall in doing a, a kind of traditional, more so than I've seen in Probable, a hand, a puppet, you know, a puppet piece behind yes. a frame in a, in a certain way. And, yes, uh, I suppose so. I, yeah, I mean, I, I think in my head, as I say, I don't, I don't, I don't sort of think, oh, I must. The only thing, when I, I know that I'm in an experiment environment like this, yeah. I know that I probably got slightly larger parameters to take like risks yeah but I don't think okay this is experimental so i'll do the you yeah, know right, i just right. in a way go oh great i mean it means that i'm probably not not you know unlike the adams family there won't be 20 people will suddenly descend on this and some <laughs> people committee and some people says. might get sacked you know <laughs> yeah, right. happened you know and uh it's so spider-man so uh, yeah that's yeah. right and so with this you sort of think oh, okay so i i kind of can do what i want right yeah um, 
And in, you know, it also depends what you, within what frame. Because what I've noticed, like in the puppetry world, which I'm, as I say, I'm not totally in the middle of, but you know, puppetry has become. You know, there's a lot of puppetry that's very sort of pleased with itself and very careful and very kind of <laughs> somber. And right. so, in some, and I don't see a lot of glove puppetry around no. in theatres. No. I mean, it still exists in a kind of, you know, kind of Muppet, or, yeah. or which is right. fantastic. I say, not, I would not, you know, the Muppets are great. But you don't see it in, th so in some ways, I would say glove puppets are probably the, the subversive puppet. <laughs> right. you know, I think in yeah. some ways the most simple puppet is probably shadow puppetry, hmm. and which is fantastic, but that's become a little hip in right. a way. Yeah. And so, but a glove puppet is not hip, really. No, right. Uh, and so, yeah, so I in guess some that ways, was the question in some ways. I so mean, in some ways, I think that. it's, but it's also, I think, maybe, you know, for me to look, if, because the show is obviously kind of about theatre. Right. I mean, huh. like, I think almost every show we've done yeah. has been about theatre and failure. Theatre and failure right. and love and death, <laughs> you know. And, uh, it's very true. And so I think there's something about it that says it's kind of the most basic. It's like theatre thing, you know, right. going on. But it's weird because, of course, there's real Punch and Judy purists. So hmm. at some point... They're going to come down on me, probably, you know, uh, with, <laughs> with their, a bat, with their bats. <laughs> so that's not the way you do it. This is the way you do it. <laughs> Could you talk for a second about? Because I, I was trying to remember, even, you know, the the opening uh, 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 experience of the audience is to come into this theater with a lot of puppets in it, the puppet cinema, mm. watching a mashup of mm. films puppets may want to watch. Where, where did that idea, because I think, I I think I, 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 what, what I think it came from is because, well, we originally we were going to do the show in Bedlam space, That's Bedlam right. lost their space. Yeah. So we came here and I, there was a conversation about making the space more interesting. Right. And I said, I don't, didn't want to make the space we were in more interesting. Right. That's right. Because I wanted it to look like it was a work of progress. I didn't want to be sort of in com competition with our own space. Sure. But th but then we thought, so we'll close the fire curtain. And, said, and we t said, oh, people will have to walk through an empty theatre. Theater. So right. that feeling of empty seats. And and so I don't, me or John, or John, um, I don't know. John, yeah. What was the second name? John Buch. Bruch, uh, Bruch. Um, he was part of that conversation. So yeah. between us, Maren was, I think, yeah. uh, you know, that, that came out, uh, the idea of, well, we, maybe we could put puppets in there and then, and thought, oh, and maybe they could be watching a film. Yeah, and we also were really interested in, um, you've, you know, Improbable has interacted over the years with the puppetry mm. community here, which is quite strong, and we're always interested. I think I, you know, was interested in, in making sure that John and Bedlam, and to a lesser extent, in the Heart of the Beast and Open Eye, Michael mm. Summers and others could still feel some, some sense of ownership around mm. this this you know this work in progress. Yes. And so, but we didn't want to abandon um, our friends at Bedlam because originally it was going to be in their space yes. and their their sort of vibe was going to infuse the sort of informality of yes. of the work. Um, so in some ways, I think you were quite generous in offering. Well, maybe. Well, I think it's also be... you know actually in some ways I felt like because also we were struggling with our kind of line up on what we were going to do. So for some time, I thought I was going to do a piece. Use, use local folks. With local people. Yeah. And so I came here to look at local pe people. By the time I actually got here and met the local people, we'd kind of decided to put our own team and to do something closer sure. to the, our final show. Right. And so it was good to have something that felt that they could contribute to in a real way. Because, if you know, in an eight-day scramble to put up a show, yeah. I probably wouldn't have really been collaborating. No, right. And I would have had to... You know, and you also would have had you've had people you'd have people you were kind of teaching things or using and assist you know they were assisting you in some way, but then you'd go off and take the show and have to yeah. recreate. And, and you know, I think it's perfect. I mean, I think it's it, that's worked out perfectly. How did you feel about what the result was? Um, I liked it, and I you know I thought at some point that you know I knew I'd have spare puppets and elephants or God yeah, what right. and wolves I've got, yeah. but I thought and I thought and then I thought you know this. I, my work shouldn't be in this. This is a real Minneapolis yeah, thing. Yeah, right. And I brought a lot of masks. I thought, maybe you can put a mask on and sit. But I thought, and I didn't think my work should be in it. Yeah. And uh, and so I like what they've done. And it's interesting, cause I, in, but on some level, 
I might have done some. I think I'd have done something different. Yeah, actually. right. Not not in this circumstance, but I, I, I'm interested in. As I, I have actually because of these puppets that I've been making were punch. Yeah. And you kind of came to my house and you saw them. Then yeah. I sort of had them on display. I love them. And I and I love. I've realised that I love seeing puppets sit in seats, hmm. because ah. you kind of if you know it's a puppet and you know it could move, but it's not moving. It's not like it's not quite like sculpture because you know it can move. Right, right. And, and so oddly, there's like something, and you also know that it's not quite like art for art's sake. Yeah. It's sort of. In between. Got a, it's got a potential life. Hmm. And, and so I'm interested in this, and I, I'm doing this, like I'm doing it with Rag, and I'm doing a project for, um, for Brick, the people who do Celebrate in Brooklyn. Yeah. And, uh, uh -huh. I have a little residency there in about a year or so, and, I, and I'm going to look at, at, at the idea of um, we are interviewing people from the local community and making films, and then mm. I make puppets from their stories. Oh, huh. And I think I'm going to have the little puppets watching the film. So there's my next door neighbor used to work in the sewers, so he was talking about rats and the sewers right. or whatever. So I'll probably make some rats, do some little scenes from his interview, and then I might, you know, have a little row of rats watching <laughs> Frank talk uh, about working the sewers, and uh, and they'll be in their own little film. And play. So I'm, I'm right. interested in some of this. So, uh, but it's, I think it's it's different from this experience. It may yeah. be more private or whatever. But I'm I'm definitely interested in that idea of puppets uh, watching stuff, and the metaphor of that puppets watching stuff. Hmm. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, and I think that question about, I think it was your, your, your idea to say, what if we had them all sitting, you know, in, yes. these, in these seats? But then we did reach that question of, yeah, but they need, so a lot of them need support. Um, yes, they need, that's right. And we built, had a two-night yeah. build-out of, of armatures so that yes. a lot of them could sit in, the, in that space. I mean, I think, you know, from, I mean, I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's a fantastic exhibition of that stuff. I mean, I think for, for my taste, like if there's right. one artist doing that, I mean, the thing is, it's not, that's a community of artists. Yeah, right. If one artist was doing it, I think I would like to see them really sitting in the seats. And because the, right. for some reason that makes me laugh. Yeah, I don't know what that is about. And there's but, some of those and guys. Some of them are, I, you know, like the guy with potato chips on yeah. his, you know, spilled that's in his, right. his hand in the bag. And I don't know why that. It's a funny idea, but I, yeah. I like it. And now I guess others, uh, theater festivals and places are interested in maybe having their. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, yeah. I, I don't. I mean, I don't know whether that'll happen. Philadelphia is yeah. not that situation because. No. We're, Play a small place. Barbican's not that because we're paying a studio theatre. Sure. So generally, the show's meant to go to studio theatres, but right. but I think yeah, there could be a possibility. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. And there's also this tension a bit in an arts centre, which does uh, you know this very curated work yes. in galleries. Even to the use of the word installation, yeah. you know, I kind of was curious to see how our visual art folks, our chief curator, would respond. And I, yeah. I kind of threw the name in an unlikely installation, uh, but right. people loved it and wanted, oh, wanted it as a, because as a, that's why we opened up the day on Saturday, yes. for it to be a, almost its own gallery space yeah. that people can come in. Oh, uh, right. We were so lost in our yeah. so the, <laughs> thing at that time. I had, I, yeah. And so did people go, yeah, oh, all day okay? on oh, oh, people, right. yeah, are very. Oh, God, we were on the other side of the curtain just yeah. <laughs> freaking out, I guess. <laughs> Uh, well, Jillian, are there any uh, things we didn't touch on? Or maybe, uh, you know, uh, we want to talk a little bit about, just to wrap things up, but, you know, this is an improbable work, but in mm. some ways it's your work as well. It's, it's, a, it's a strange time for improbable because I guess I've moved country, so I live mm -hmm. in Brooklyn now, and improbable is based in London. And, uh, y you, you know, uh, we're, we've always been quite a volatile company, you know, mm -hmm. pulling different directions. And actually, you know, there's never really been anything. I think up the back there was something about improbable in your progress in a time to read, and I can't quite remember where it comes from. But, yeah. but really, improbable is just me, Phelan and Lee, and Nick Sweeting. Right. And some, lots of friends who come in and work sure. now and again. I mean, and actually our shows are incredibly different from each other. Right. And there's certain kinds of shows. There's a, there's a kind of show that comes out of Phelan being in a show. And usually when Phelan's in a show... Like 70 Hill or something. Yeah, it's usually, it's very personal to him and, right. and it's not usually design-led. It's usually led by that personal story. So yeah. I would say 70 Hill Lane, although I guess 70 Hill Lane was pretty visual in a way. I yeah. Mean, the, the, um, but but it, it was led really by his story. 
coma and the spirit was slightly more shared, panic was led by from the story. And then I suppose there's been things like sticky this right. that, that I've led. So they've yeah. come usually from a design world. And then often the, the bigger collaborations like Satya Graha, right. I would say are probably design led as well. So shock uh, headed strictly, not improbable, but it actually we started working on it before Improbable formed. It was almost at mm. the same time. Yeah, and again, that, I would say that was a visually led world yeah. in that yeah. I definitely designed the set before we knew what the, any story was. Yeah. And then there's things like Anima, which is improvisation. Animal and, improvisation, so yeah. you know that's kind of right. like its own yeah. weird. And, and Life Game falls into that category. So, right. you know, there's sort of categories of shows in there, yeah. three or four. And they're actually, I don't think they're, those categories aren't really like each other. But I mean, maybe there is, maybe, you know, I'm sure Bob Dylan probably thinks all the songs are different, but you know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> there's, there's definitely an improbable feel, which I think this this work continues in some way. And I think the feel is, is I think in some ways, you know, we're not a young company. It's very hard. for ages we were described as a young company, yeah, right. and then there's not no one ever says they're like a oh, middle-aged yeah. company. Suddenly, like we're old, you're young, 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 old. <laughs> now we're I think we're an old company. Yeah. So it's it's kind of unusual. So we're not young people experimenting, right? And, and I guess, you know, we've had a lot of success and we've had a lot of failure. We've never made it really, really big. Right. Uh, you know, really. So, so on one level, you know, we're prepared to fail. So I think all, all of our shows on some level are willing to take the risk right. that we might fall on our face. Yeah. Which I think just gives them, it's not like we're trying to make our name. Yeah. And that if this really works out, someone will give us a proper job. Or, you know, <laughs> I went beyond that. So I, they probably have a kind of that sense. Uh, you know, they probably have a bit sure. of that. But I, I can't right. really say, and I suppose I'm too in it, you know. Right. But it is, you know, it's interesting to know what the, what the future is. Right, right now, I'm, we're just going to transition where I'm not going to be an artistic director of Improbable. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're not I quite sure that. where, where mm. that's going to go. Um, mm. and, you know, and some of that money is difficult at the moment. And, right, sure. And I'm here. Both in the UK and in the States. That's right. Yeah. And and, uh, and I think, you know, it's sort of the moment recently with, with the other, they've sort of, they've, they've not been doing so many shows. I don't think they've led, being led towards doing shows as such. Right. Whereas I really... Right now, I feel I really need to do shows. I really need to yeah. make. It's not always been like that. I remember seven years ago saying I didn't want to do any more shows. I wanted to be an artist. You right. know, so it doesn't. It's yeah. not always like that. A visual right? artist. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know, but right now, I just actually I don't. In a way, I don't differentiate either between visual art. And I, I, at the moment, I just want to be making stuff hmm. and doing shows. I feel I'm of an age that if I kind of don't do it now, it might be too late or something. So right now, hmm. I just. I suppose I'm have an excitement being in a new place. Mm. Um, and, and right now I find America actually more positive than Britain mm. in its attitude. Uh, and so I feel I have in a lot a of sense energy. Of to or, uh, it, kind of, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I have kids and, and yeah. uh, right now in Brooklyn where I am, I find a really incredible place to be hmm. and, a, and actually a very positive place to be. Both creatively and just social. I mean, yeah, I f and actually I found it a very friendly place to be hmm. and very supportive. Hmm. And there seems to be a lot of respect there. And it feels, it might be an illusion, it feels less like dangerous than London. You know, Dun hmm. London, Britain's very confused at the moment. Politically, hmm. it's very right. confused. The arts are gonna go through a real rough time yeah. in Britain because, you know, the cuts Britain, for really since Thatcher, Britain has always looked to America and said we should be more like America. So, you know, they looked to cutting the health service and they looked to right. cutting and privatizing everything. But there's no history of philanthropy really in Britain yeah. because there's been a because there's been a health system and because there's been subsidy in the arts. Rich people aren't used to giving money to the arts. So, it, what will happen? I think. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure people know farmer, but what I think will happen is that there's going to be a big hole, bef and some really exciting things will probably bubble up because they always do dig a hole. Some, when there's some weird things, things are going to yeah, come up. Right. But it's it's they'll probably. I have a feeling that they're going to let it collapse before it gets built up again. Huh. I, I have a little feeling of that. I mean, but I don't know. Maybe that'll happen here because. 
you know, I don't know. Yeah, don't know. but there has been a decades of, of you know, uh, well, forever, very little subsidy from mm. the government. So yes. there's had to be other things yeah. that support yeah. work. But here, you know, you do, you know, you see the back of the programs, there's a long list of yeah. benefactors. Right. And that, there's no tradition of that in Britain. There's a, you know, there's a few, the Sainsbury's, there's a few, there's a few things like that, but generally it's not seen that way. Well, I, I, you know, I, I was studying art history, and, and to yeah. me, America seems more like uh, Florence in the in the Renaissance. You know, right. it seems there's patrons it, here, private patrons, sure. and and donors and yeah. kind of angels that appear from somewhere. And I think that's it doesn't work like that so much. There's in a Europe few people either. which yeah. is how Michael Morris survives right. cultural industry and art angel. That's where the mm -hmm. word art angel comes from. But he's like he's got the only people who do that, right. you know, and it's not, they're not enough to go around right. because it's not in the tradition. Hmm. Uh, and it'll take some time for that to become the yeah. tradition. So uh, it's not why I moved. I mean, I just moved. I moved for it was because it was exciting and I was hmm. working here more than I was working there. Right. You know? And maybe that'll all dry up now and I'll have to go home. <laughs> we hope not. <laughs> on, th on that note, uh, Julian, thank you so much for right. You know, sharing your ideas and I feel uh, like it should shake your hand with it's, a puppet. It dog. is a, it's a <laughs> 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 Thank you, Punch. So thanks again. Okay, great.